And now we hop on to question number four uh, from the May June 2025 exam. Right, let's go for it. They say trolley A of mass 1.5 kilograms is at rest. Now, what I would do is I would just indicate that on my diagram. So velocity of A is zero, right, on a frictionless horizontal surface. A second trolley B of mass 2 kilograms traveling horizontally at a constant speed V collides with trolley A. The trolley stick, the trolleys rather, stick together and move at a constant velocity to the right, okay, covering a distance of 0 0.8 meters in two seconds. All right, so now we know that once they are together, they moved in this case a distance of 0 0.8 meters, okay, and they covered this at a time of two seconds. Right, so they say to us, ignore all friction and rotational effects, which means it is an isolated system, right? And they say, state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Please, as I said, do invest in knowing these principles so that you can, uh, you know, benefit from your low-hanging fruits. Right, so in this case, uh, we know that in an isolated system, the total linear momentum remains the same, or you can say, in an isolated system, total, the total linear momentum uh, or momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. Right, so they say calculate the speed V with which trolley B moves before the collision. Now, I want you to please note, guys. So, if I wanted to find uh, the speed V, I would need to find out what is the speed of the trolleys after they collide but how do i do that i've got the distance and the time so the speed of both trolley a and b would be change in velo uh, change in displacement divided by change in time that would be 0 0.8 divided by 2 and that would be 0 0.4 meters per second okay right now we can apply the principles of conservation of linear momentum the sum of momentum before collision will be equal to the sum of their momenta after collision. All right, and uh, I know this is the mass of A, velocity of A before, plus the mass of B, velocity of B before. This would be equal to the mass of A, plus the mass of B times their common velocity, the velocity of A and B, right? So we know in this case that uh, uh, A is 1.5 kilograms multiplied by zero. B is two kilograms and the initial velocity is what we're looking for. And in this case, the mass of A and mass of B, that's um, 1.5 plus 2, and this is multiplied by that velocity there, which is 0 0.4. Uh, something that I neglected to say, ladies and gents, please, it's important for us to choose a positive direction. I've assumed that the direction of motion uh, of the trolleys is positive to the right, so that is why that would be positive. Remember that velocity is a vector, so we must actually... Uh, quantify its velo in its uh, magnitude and direction. So let's get to it. So we've got 1.5 plus 2. In fact, I should say 1.5 plus 2. Okay, that's times 0 0.4. And in this case, I need to divide that by 2. That gives me 0 0.7. So the velocity of B, right, uh, before collision was actually 0 0.7. So that's 0 0.7 meters per second. Okay, and there it is. It was actually to the right. Okay, let's go for it, ladies and gents. So they say to us, is the collision uh, elastic or inelastic? It will definitely be inelastic. They didn't ask us to prove this with a calculation. So it is definitely an inelastic collision. There would be sound and some distortion that takes place that would actually take away some of the kinetic energy, right? 
so kinetic energy is not conserved right so they say during another collision trolley b exerts a greater force right on trolley a and the change in momentum is the same as before how is the time for the collision affected now to answer this question ladies and gents we'd have to look at uh, the impulse momentum equation right and remember what does it say so in this case we've got f net multiplied by the change in time and this is change in momentum now we are trying to find out what will happen to the time in this case change in momentum stays the same divided by the net force so I want you to please note, ladies and gents, that what they are saying is that the force is increased. So what will happen to the time? The time will definitely be increased because they are inversely proportional to each other. So our answer is that it decreases. And to support it with a relevant equation, it is definitely going to be this very equation over here. And you can indicate with your arrows that your net force is increased whilst your uh, time is actually decreased. And that is how the cookie crumbles on this question. As we are going to be uh, continuing to the next question, please do not forget to subscribe and like. And please do recommend Uncle's channel to your friends and your family. Ooh, I've got some hiccups. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop shop.